We've gone over climbing, we've gone over descending, we've gone over the build. Now let's talk about my overall opinion of this bike, who I think this bike is for, and who should be maybe either looking bigger or smaller with the Signal Peak or the LaSalle Peak. Welcome back to the channel. We are Hannah and Mel and we love to adventure. Normally on this channel, we are traveling all over the world in search of the best trails and beaches. And whether we are on bike or on foot, if it's an adventure, we're in. In this video, Mo is going to do a quick review of the bike we've been riding this year, the Fazari Delano Peak. We have gotten a lot of questions about this bike and we figured we should probably answer them. And don't worry, if you are here strictly for the adventures, we have a lot more adventure videos coming soon. Stay tuned. And if you're curious about my thoughts on the bike, just know my thoughts are in line with Mo's. I really have been loving my Delano and feel like I've become a better rider on it. Now let's get into the review. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mo and behind me we have my Fazari Delano Peak, the bike that I have been thrashing around for the last few months. Now in this video, we're gonna break down my review of the Fazari Delano Peak and we're gonna go over what I love about this bike, what I don't love about this bike, who I think this bike is for and who should probably look elsewhere, either its bigger sibling, the LaSalle or its smaller sibling, the Signal Peak, a little bit more of an XC bike. But yeah, we're gonna go over all of that, but for First, let's break down what this bike is. Now, if you didn't know, the Delano Peak is actually a 135 millimeter 29er with 150 millimeters of travel up front. Now, this bike also has a 65 degree head angle and a 77 degree seat angle. And those two numbers, I feel like, play a crucial role into how this bike feels on the trails. Now, the bike also features a GA link, which allows you to actually play with some of the geometry on the bike. So there's a high and a low setting. Now, as for the suspension design, Fazari actually calls this Tetra link and I don't know where that name comes from. What it feels like to me is a more poppy playful version of horse link. So what you get on the trails is a very active suspension that pedals really well, is very poppy and playful. And yeah, I've been a huge fan of the suspension design on this bike. Now, before we get into the review of the bike, let's actually go over who is Fazari because that's gonna be an important question for a lot of you guys in the bike buying process because you wanna know where you're getting your bike from. Fazari is a direct to consumer brand based out of Salt Lake City, Utah or close to it. It's actually Linden, which is an hour South, super cool company with really cool values. They're all about strong customer service, which is why they also have a 30 day return policy, which is pretty insane. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. They have salespeople similar to your local bike shop on hand to answer all of your questions. If you don't wanna go through the whole online process, you can just give them a call and tell them exactly what you want. The coolest thing about buying a bike from the direct to consumer wise is say there's a certain upgrade you want that they have on their website. Like you wanna upgrade your cranks or you wanna upgrade your wheel set or there's a certain chain guide that you want, or maybe the part isn't even something they carry, you can actually order that thing and have it shipped to them and they will install it on your bike in the bike buying process. That's something that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about. So say there's that component that you have to have on your bike, you can actually order it, send it to them and have them install it. Now, the other cool thing is you also get a lifetime warranty on the frame, which is pretty rad as well. And a lot of you guys are probably gonna be wondering, Mo, where does the name Fazari come from? It's like the number one comment that ever since we started riding for them, people give us is, oh yeah, the name Fazari. The cool thing is, is, is the owner's son actually named the company when he was a kid. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's where the name comes from. So hopefully you guys enjoyed some of those fun facts. Now let's get into the actual review of the bike. Before we do that though, I do have to take a shameless plug here and say, if you guys can hit that like button, it really has been helping support the channel a ton. We also wanna thank today's video sponsor, Lap Austere. If you guys didn't know, this is one of the best hip packs on the market. Hannah has been loving this thing. The cool thing about this hip pack is it sits so low low on the hips that it really doesn't rattle around when you ride. The other cool thing is the water bottle sections are form fitted. So that means you can put your water bottle in and out super easily. You don't even have to tie it down and it won't fall out of your pack. There's also a lot of cool zippers in here and a lot of storage for jackets or an extra shell, your phone, anything and everything. And yeah, we've been super stoked on this hip pack. Really awesome dude out of Salt Lake City, one man operation. So yeah, Lab Austere. And we have a coupon code for you guys. You can actually save 25% off of this hip pack and also help support the channel. We'll leave all of those links in the description. Thank you guys for listening and let's get into the review of the actual bike. But first let's break down my build. I'm six foot two and I am running an XL frame. Hannah is actually five foot eight and she's running a size medium frame. We've both talked about it. These have been some of the most perfect fitting bikes for us. So if you are in that six two range, I feel like the XL works really well. Hannah, once again at five eight is rocking the medium. So talking about my build, let's break it down right now. So starting off with suspension, I am running the DVO Diamond in a 150 mils of travel. I love the diamond. A lot of people thought I would have put the Onyx on there, which is the stiffer fork offering from DVO. But I just feel like I want a fork with a little bit of flex
flex on my trail bikes. And yeah, DVO has been a strong supporter of the channel. We love working with them and this fork has been awesome. I also have it paired with the brand new DVO Topaz. This is new and improved. It's stiffer and it also feels a bit plusher as well. For the handlebars, I'm running my favorite one-up handlebars in the 20 mil rise. Now connecting that bar to the bike is an Industry 9 A35 stem. I have a Chris King headset this year. Chris King sent these over for us to test out. And honestly, it just looks so good on there. I'm running Code RSC brakes. Now I made the switch from Shimano XT a while ago and I could not be more stoked. I love the Code RSC, so much stopping power and actually quite a bit of modulation. Now you will notice I am still running Ice Tech rotors. I haven't found an alternative to these rotors. So yeah, still running Shimano Ice Tech rotors, 203 up front and 180 in the rear. Now for the drivetrain, I love electronic shifting. So I am running Ceram Axis or I think they want to call it AXS or something like that. I don't know. I bought this, so I'm going to call it Axis. So I actually run a GX rear derailleur. I've done testing between the GX, X01 and XX1 and I can't feel a difference. So I feel like the GX has been more than appropriate, but I will actually run a XX1 crank just because cranks are something that I kind of transfer from bike to bike and I do like the weight savings. I am running the GX rear cassette. Tell you from experience, this XX1 chain lasts a very long time, a lot more so than the standard GX chain. So I do spend a little bit more money on the chains. I also have the new shifter slash controller thingy majiggy. Now for pedals, we did start working with Crank Brothers this year. So I am running the Stamp 7 pedals in a large from them. And these things are awesome. So much traction. I love how low profile they are. And for the wheels, we're actually running their new Synthesis alloy wheels. Now these things have been insane. The cool thing with the Synthesis wheels is they're actually running a different spoke setup in the front and the rear. So in the front, you're actually running a 28 hole setup. And in the rear, you're running 32. So you get a little bit more flex and conformity to the trails up front and a little bit of a stiffer wheel setup in the rear. For tires, I'm actually running my tried and true favorite, the Minion DHF up front in a 2.5 setup and a Minion DHR in the rear in the 2.4. For the dropper post, I'm running the PNW Loam Dropper in a 200 mil setup and I have my favorite specialized woman saddle. It's the Power Mimic. And yeah, this saddle, love this saddle. Don't know what it says about me, but it is a woman's saddle. And also keeping me hydrated is normally Tailwind Nutrition in my bottle. Love working with these guys. And yeah, Tailwind really has been helping me through all of these Sufferfest and bad idea rides I've come up with. Now you probably noticed the oil slick bolts all throughout the build. That's our buddy's company, Better Bolts, and you can save 10% off any of those bolts with code AWESOMEMTB10. Also, if you guys are ever in the need of anything from a bike shop, we highly recommend hitting up our buddy, Sean with N Plus One Bikes. He's our good friend, and he also takes care of all friends of the channel. Just give him a call and tell him that we sent you, and he will take care of you. Now my bike is essentially identical to Moe's, except for the biggest difference is I'm running 170 mil cranks, so I want the shorter crank arm because I have have shorter femurs and shorter legs um, but I still have pretty long legs so I still stuck with 170 and I also went with black Maxxis tires instead of the tan walls I just feel like the black looks a little bit cleaner the tan walls are a little bit busy on that bike and then I also went with the black industry 9 stem for the exact same reasons I just felt like the bike was already loud enough and I kind of wanted to tame down the colors and just go with black on the stem so I know it seems like there's a lot of bells and whistles on this bike I will say Fazari has a build right now I believe it is the comp build don't quote me I'll put it right here and it is actually $35.99. That build is actually available right now. So if you do end up pulling the trigger, that bike is ready to go. So now that we've covered a lot of the basics and the build, let's talk about the ride aspect of this bike. And we're gonna start off with breaking down climbing. Now for climbing, this has been one of the better pedaling bikes I have ridden. And I will say a lot of that I feel like is attributed to the seat angle. I feel like I am right on top of the bottom bracket. Now I have been beyond impressed with how this thing does uphill. It's actually been probably one of my favorite bikes to climb on and I think a lot of that has to do with the seat angle so it's rocking a very steep 77 degree seat angle and it feels like it when you are riding the bike taller riders with higher saddle heights are affected by slacker seat angles more so so if this bike had a slacker seat angle at my pedaling position I'm going to be further behind the bottom bracket this bike I am literally on top of that bottom bracket I'm able to climb super steep tight sections with ease now I will say in terms of efficiency you do feel a little bit of 
of a bop from this bike when the shock is completely open. I ride all of my bikes with the shock open uphill, uh, and I actually don't necessarily think that bop is a bad thing uh, in all scenarios. Uh, if you're on a fire road and you're trying to mass, yes, I would reach for the lockout. However, for most climbs on trails around here, especially single track style climbs that are a little on the techier side, this thing is glued to the ground. I feel like no matter how techy the climb gets, this thing does not give up traction and that's been a really awesome feature as well. In terms of acceleration out of the saddle, I feel like this bike has a pep in its step and I feel like a lot of that's attributed to the suspension design. Like I mentioned, I feel like it's a poppy, playful version of horse link, which means you still get the active qualities on the downhills, but in terms of uphills, it pedals really well out of the saddle and I constantly find myself trying to sprint uphill and yeah, I've been overall very impressed with how this thing's performed. Now let's talk about everyone's favorite part and that is the downhill. And this thing once again has been blowing me away. Now I don't feel like you can fake downhill. You guys watch our video, you guys have been watching our videos or if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing. But yeah, I feel like you guys have probably noticed both Hannah and I have, I don't know, I feel like become better riders on the Delano Peak. It's been insane to see how capable this bike is for a 135 mils travel bike. I feel like that head angle is at that sweet spot of 65 degrees. You can go slacker when you go up to its bigger sibling, the LaSalle, but I feel like 65 is very appropriate for a majority of trails out there. In terms of how this bike feels on the trails or on the downhills, it does have a very active suspension design. So this bike tracks to the ground really well, but at the same time retains a pop in and out of corners, which I have been super stoked on. And it's also very playful. So I find myself constantly trying to figure out where the smallest little bump is. And I try to kind of either jib off it or do my best to look cool, look younger than I am, because I feel like I am getting older. But yeah, in terms of how this bike feels on the trails, I feel like it's been a very playful, aggressive style bike. And blending those two worlds I feel like is not an easy task so super stoked that Fazari was able to do it in the Delano Peak and once again I don't feel like you can fake downhills you guys have been seeing us in the videos and I feel like we have become more capable riders on this thing overall very impressed with how this thing does downhill poppy playful corners well very active suspension design in terms of any negative aspects when it comes to the downhill I will say a couple of things to note here I do notice a little bit of chain slop and I feel like the only reason I notice it is because because the chainstay protector that Fazari uses, I feel like isn't necessarily the most sound dampening. So if you guys don't notice on certain other models from other brands, a lot of companies have been developing their own integrated chainstay protector or their aftermarket one or however they want to call it. But essentially these are sound deadening devices that go on the chainstay area. And I feel like the one that Fazari is utilizing currently does enhance the chain slap slightly. So you will notice on that chunkier style of terrain, there might be a little bit of rattle on there. It's not the end of the world because there are ways to fix this. There's a ton of really awesome guides into either how to make your own chainstay protector or with that being said, there's some cool aftermarket options. There's one company, it's VHS, no affiliation with them. I actually reached out to them and they haven't even got back to me. So I think I'm just gonna pull the trigger on it. But yeah, that thing looks really awesome or even create your own. Maybe we'll do a video creating our own. But yeah, there is a little bit of a chain slap and it's only noticeable because of the chain stay protector on this thing. So we've gone over climbing, we've gone over descending, we've gone over the builds. Now let's talk about my overall opinion of this bike, who I think this bike is for and who should be maybe either looking bigger or smaller with the Signal Peak or the LaSalle Peak. Now, to give you guys an overall summary of how I feel about this bike, I am in love. I would actually say this has probably been my favorite bike I have ever owned. And I know you guys are probably saying, Mo, you're just saying that because you ride for Fazari. I would actually say that I would pick this over the LaSalle and the Signal Peak. So I have my pick of choice. I can have any bike from their lineup. I actually am going to be building up a LaSalle Peak soon. However, I can't stop reaching for this bike. I just feel like it has the perfect amount of travel. And if I'm going for a ride, I don't have to worry. Is the ride going to be too XC? Is it going to be too downhill? Because I feel like this bike does everything so well. And I've been having so much fun on the downhills. I've been very impressed with how much I can push this thing. I feel like the bike has been making me a better rider. And I feel like the same can be said for Hannah as well. If you guys watch our videos, Overall, we've been very impressed by how capable this bike is. Now, who might this bike not be for? If you're that rider that you're looking for a much more aggressive enduro rig, they do have the LaSalle, which I rode in Sedona. I didn't feel like I was penalized too much in terms of climbing. In fact, I was actually blown away by how well that thing did uphill. 
But with that being said, in terms of just having fun playing around with the bike and also acceleration, pure acceleration feel, I feel like I get that from the Delano Peak, which is why I keep reaching for this bike. Now, if you're that rider that's looking for a much more XC capable rig, you want something light, you want something efficient, I can't say enough good things about the Signal Peak. So if you're that XC racer at heart, highly recommend checking out the Signal Peak. For me personally, that do everything bike, I wanna pedal up to the top, I wanna be the first one to the top or go up the steepest trails. And then I also wanna go down the most rowdy style trails around. I've never been so stoked on a bike. This bike has kind of made me fall back in love with mountain biking. Not that I ever fell out of it, but I definitely found myself riding gravel bikes when we were back home. When we're on the road, we're riding so many cool new trails. And every time we come back home, it's so hard for me to ride the trails that I kind of grew up riding. I feel like I get kind of burnt out. This thing though, I keep reaching for it and I keep being more and more stoked every time. And yeah, there's something about this bike. It just makes you feel like a kid again. Overall, super impressed with Delano Peak. We'll put links to everything I talked about in the description of this video. Let us know if you guys have any other questions and we will be sure to answer them in the comment section. And hopefully this video helped you guys get a little bit closer to figuring out what bike is the right bike for you. And with that being said, until next time you guys, ride awesome. Phew.